So on Earth, if I want to go somewhere and I want to know how hard it is, I need to know the distance. So if something's like 10,000 kilometres away, that's going to be a difficult, expensive yep. trip. Whereas if it's you know, 500 metres just down the road, it's going to be an easy trip. Is that also the case in space? Well, you would think so, except we actually have to think about it in terms of velocity. So how fast it's going to take us to get there, rather than actually how far away it is. So that's because, I guess, in space, um, in terms of expense at least, if I wanted to go a million, million, million kilometres, I could just fire my rocket for a few seconds and then just glide. And just coast your way, which is not the case on Earth, right? You would eventually slow down. It'll take a long time to get there, but robots don't particularly care. Yep. And so you can go as far as you like with very little fuel in space. So it's, it's velocity that's really the feature. And this is something you can often tell if you're looking at a press release. Yes. If it's going on about... Uh, the spacecraft is million, million, whatever kilometres, then it's in intended for the general public or the media. Whereas if it's a professional, they'll say, well, it's a velocity change of five kilometres per second. Which is actually a lot. Which is a lot. So what we're going to do is try and turn you into professionals so that you think of spacecraft trying to get somewhere. You immediately think, what's the velocity change and not how far is it? Yep. So... Um, let, let's imagine just trying to go to space. Yep, okay. Right? So, so space is pretty close. Low Earth orbit's only a few hundred kilometres yep. up. So that's pretty fast. The trouble is, to be in low Earth orbit, you have to be going around the world every 90 minutes. That's because you're spinning around, kind of constantly falling the Earth. And to do that at that speed takes 90-ish minutes. That's right. So even if you're trying to get to a spacecraft and it's overhead now, by the time you get there, it'll probably be over Greenland. That's right. <laughs> and then by the time you get to Greenland, it's actually back behind you. Oh, much faster. Yes. It's pretty around about four or five times That's before right. you get to Greenland. So this is a real problem. These things move very fast. This is why when rockets take off, people often ask, if you look at a time lapse, this is a yes. time lapse of a Falcon 9 rocket launching from uh, Florida. And it goes up to begin with, but most of the time it's going sideways. That's right. To get that enough speed to actually get it into orbit rather than just going up. Because if you just go up 400 kilometers, that's easy. But if you don't have the speed, you're just going to fall back down. So in fact, to get to space, you need a bit of velocity to, to get you up. But you, actually far more velocity, about three or four times more, is going to be sideways velocity to keep you up there. So to get to space, it's not much point to think distance. Distance doesn't really help you. You've got to think the velocity, because that's where most of your fuel is going to go. It's going to go blasting you sideways to get up to that enormous speed. And in fact, this is actually one of the reasons why you always see the rockets going to the east, because they're going into the rotation of the Earth, just to get that extra little bit of speed, because every little bit counts. Because the Earth is spinning, so if you launch in the same direction, the Earth's spinning, that gives you a bit more kick to help you with the whole thing. That's right. Now, this is something that's often got wrong in movies. So I want to do the example of the movie Gravity, which apparently was quite a good movie. It was. I've uh, never seen it, but I'm told it's good. For $120 million, I think it was. <laughs> and in this movie, uh, what we have is the, uh, uh, they're trying to repair the Hubble Space Telescope. Which astronauts did quite often. And that they, in the, while they're there, they get destroyed by space junk. And so they have to e escape to the International Space Station. Yep. Now, the Hubble Space Telescope is orbits about 520 kilometers up, whereas the International Space Station is a bit lower to 400 and a bit. So, I mean, 520 to 440, yeah. 420, that's not that far. I mean, it's only 100 kilometers. You could do that in an hour on Earth. Yes, and you've got a rocket pack, so you just fire your rocket a bit, drift for a while, and then fire in reverse to slow yourself down. So what was the problem then with gravity? Well, the problem is that because this is, these two dots are actually the International Space Station and the Hubble Space Telescope, okay. and you can see I started them off in the same place, but now a few orbits later they're not in the same place at all. The trouble is because Hubble is further away, it's going slower to overcome gravity. Also, they're in different inclination orbits. The Hubble Space Telescope is at an inclination of 28 degrees because it was launched from the Cape and that's, about that's, that's, that's the most economical 20. launch from that. Whereas the International Space Station, because it had to be serviced by Russian rockets, which are launching from 51 degrees north, had to have an inclination of 51 degrees. So not only they're going different speeds at different heights, they're at different angles. That's right. So... Let's say you think, oh, yes, the International Space Station's 100 kilometers there. By the time you go there, it's going to be over Greenland while you're over you know, Australia. So even though she in gravity is traveling at the 400-ish uh, kilometer orbit or 540 of, of, of Hubble Space Telescope, trying to get to the International Space Station, they would have moved in that time sufficiently that you're out of luck. And even if you managed to get there, you managed to time it just right so they were passing each other at the exact moment, because they're at different inclinations, it'll be bombing past you at about two kilometers a second. Two kilometers a second. So that's about twice the speed of a rifle bullet. So, 
You're going to have to be mighty strong to hold on to that. Yes, it's here, kaboof! <laughs> it's gone again. Um, so, to actually rendezvous, what she's going to need is a very large rocket pack that's capable of accelerating her up to that yeah. extra speed in the extra direction of two kilometers a second. That's so you really need, meters per second. You need change. to match speed so you can kind of nicely merge just as we do going into traffic. That's right, only you're not trying to merge into traffic with a two kilometer per second relative difference. That's right. And you know it's easy to merge traffic if you're going at about the same speed. Yep. But these are going in different directions at very high speeds. Yep. So this would be a bit like trying to run across a motorway, <laughs> um, only much, much, much worse. That's right. So, so this is why people often think, let's have uh, a space repair shop up there where you can fix things rather than having to just deorbit them and they run out of fuel. But the trouble is your repair shop has to be in pretty much exactly the same orbit, in the same inclination, at the same altitude. If it's anything else, it's going to be a huge relative speed difference, which means you're going to need a lot of fuel to accelerate your repair shop to match the velocity of your space probe and then accelerate it back afterwards. So you're going to rapidly run out of fuel. So unless you have one really special satellite you want to service, or there's a bunch of them, it's really not going to be practical. So it might work for geostationary orbit, because yep. there you've got a whole bunch of spacecraft which are in pretty much the, the same, same orbit. orbit. Yep. So if we're up there, I can see something like a repair shop going. You can just have a, a repair shop that gradually moves around that orbit, fixing things. Whereas low Earth orbit, they're at different heights, different speeds, different angles, and it's going to be pretty chaotic to catch up to all of them. Well, if you've got something like a constellation with a whole, bunch, like, uh, a whole bunch of spacecraft in the same sorts of orbit, the same altitude, and same inclination, maybe just further around the Earth, then it doesn't take too much energy to move from one to the next, and so maybe there's something you can do, but most of the time it's going to be very hard.